Hello, and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso, and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, and I'm adjunct faculty at Columbia College Chicago in the Interior Architecture program. Shout out to all of my students. I hope you're having a great day. It's a decent fall day here in Chicago, not too bad. I hope all my students are doing great and everyone around watching this video is doing well as well. All right, so today we're going to look at Revit extrusions, creating Revit extrusions. And you, you see, I have a couple here. Uh, and the first one, I had to create a subtraction and a union. And the second one I created, I used just a subtraction. So we'll be looking at subtraction and and union uh, as well as extrusion. All right, before we jump into that, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and click on the red bar to subscribe. Click on the little bell to receive all of the notifications. If you're a young architect, an architecture student, interior architect, there is something here for you on this channel. Help me get to 7,000 subscribers. I'm getting pretty close. Also, connect with me on Instagram at my first name, Alfonso, my last name, Peluso, Alfonso underscore Peluso. Love to see what you're up to. Lately, my Columbia College students have been exploring the basics of Rhino and making great three-dimensional models using extrude, loft, sweep, and they've been making these really beautiful drawings. My IIT students just finished up their midterm where they took their studio project and they created it parametrically in the plug-in Grasshopper. All right, love to connect with you there. Okay, so let's uh, let's get started here. Let me uh, I'm going to close these windows down. And we're going to go to to new. Now I could just go straight to architectural template, but I want to point out when I go to new that I'm choosing architectural template. That is not the default. I want to choose architectural template. Okay, so here we are. We're going to create some extrusion models. And I'm going to make these at full scale. So, you know, maybe my first extrusion is like two feet by two feet, the size of a large column. Okay, so to do that, I am going to the down arrow. So I'm in the architecture tab. I'm going to go to the down arrow in my case and choose model in place. And I'm going to choose a category for this. So modeling in Revit is very different than modeling in Rhino, let's say, because Revit is BIM. It's building information modeling. So it wants all this upfront information. So it can become a bit more cumbersome than modeling in something like Rhino. It wants to know what category is this going to be under. And I'm just putting all of my models under a generic model category. And then it wants me to name it. So I'm going to call this extrusion 1. OK. So telling naming it extrusion one did not tell Revit that I'm making an extrusion so when we went to model in place these are our options for modeling modeling in place extrusion blend revolve sweep swept blend and some void forms and I'm gonna make a tutorial for um, maybe not each one of these but uh, I'll, I might group a few together but I will cover in a tutorial I will cover each one of these modeling techniques so let's start with extrusion okay so from the beginning it wants me to draw it two-dimensionally so I'm going to draw a, a rectangle and I'm going to make this rectangle two feet by two feet and hit escape a few times. Now if you didn't have those dimensions, if those dimensions didn't stay there for you, you could always select a line and you could change the dimension this way. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Alright, so two feet by two feet. 
Now by default, the extrusion, if we look over here, the, the, the default height for the extrusion is one foot because it says extrusion starts zero, extrusion end is one foot. Okay, we'll take a look at this in a little bit. So I'm just going to hit the green check mark to say I'm done with that particular extrusion. And I'm done with the model as a whole because I can make multiple extrusions. I could put a blend in. I could basically model an entire, let's say, desk here. And, and then I can say finish model. All right, let's look at this in 3D. So I'm going to go to a default 3D view. Okay, and there's my my extrusion. Now if I want to see both the plan and the 3D at the same time, I can use the shortcut WT. Okay, WT for window tile and now I'm looking at this in plan and in 3D. Okay, so let's make the height of this 8 feet. Alright, so I'm going to select the object and then I'm going to go ahead and select that object and then I'm going to choose edit in place and then I'm going to select the object one more time. Okay, so I selected the object then told Revit I want to edit in place. Now what am I editing? I selected that object and I, I, can, I can use these arrows to stretch it up or I can type in that I want that to be 8 feet. Not 58 feet but 8 feet apply. Okay. Now I want to, let me, if I highlight it, I can orbit around it. Now I want to do a subtraction. I want to take a cylinder out of this object. So what's important for this, let me finish this model. Okay, if I was to just do a generic model by itself, it would not subtract from it. I need to edit this model this edit in place. So I need to select it, edit in place, and then go over to create. And I'm going to create an extrusion. Now I want to model on the front face of this object. So there's something called a work plane. So in Rhino we had construction planes. In Revit we have work planes. So I'm going to choose set and I'm going to choose pick a plane and then I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to pick the plane that I want to draw my circle on. So I pick that front plane. So now when I draw the circle it draws it in elevation on that front plane. Just going to move that over a little bit. Okay and I'm going to click the check mark. There's my extrusion. I want to make sure that this goes all the way through okay so I'm making sure that that's going all the way through okay not quite sure why I don't see that in plan probably because the height of it uh, in relationship to where this is being cut this is probably being cut below that okay so what I want to do with this form is I want to make sure that this form is a void form so if I scroll all the way down here where it says solid void I'm going to change that to void. So that's really important. Click apply. It'll become like an orange. Now I'm seeing it in plan. It'll become like an orange color. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose cut. Cut geometry. First pick solid geometry to cut. First, sorry, first pick select solid geometry to be cut okay so that's this one and then select solid geometry to be cut let's see if this was right yeah so it was what I was cutting and then what I was cutting from so if I let's see if it lets me undo it yeah so cut select the void object select the solid object and now I have a whole cut through that all right, so let's say now that I want a union. Okay, again, I want to I want to stress that if I if I finish the model, okay, because a lot of times these models get finished and then we move on to something else. And if I want to now make a union, I want to add another object onto this. I'm going to have to select this. 
I'm going to click on my edit in place and go to create and I'm going to make another extrusion because that's what we're working on today. I'm going to make another extrusion. I'm going to, I'm, I want to be able to snap to this top area here. So I'm going to set my work plane. I'm going to choose pick a plane because it will only snap to the current work plane. So I'm going to pick that. Now it's going to let me draw my rectangle. And this was going to be um, two feet by two feet. I'm going to make this. So once I get in here, I can make this two feet. Okay. I don't want to select that line. I want to select this line. Oops. I want to select that line and set it to two feet. Or else it would overlap. So I want to make sure that's right where it needs to be. Okay, so now we will click the check mark. I'm going to drag this down. Okay, at the moment they are two separate objects, but I want to join these two together. So I'm going to click on join. I'm going to pick this one and that one. And now it joins together as one object. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, that's some of my love for Revit of the love-hate relationship that I have. <laughs> All right, let's make another extrusion here. Okay, so I'm going to finish this model. And we'll do this from the, from the beginning. I'm going to go to Architecture. I'm going to go to the down arrow for Component, Model in Place. I'm going to choose Generic Models. I'll name this Extrusion 02. I'm going to draw this in plan. So I'm going to choose Extrusion. I have to tell it Extrusion. And I'm going to draw a spline. Okay, pretty cool spline there. Now, if I click the green check mark, it's going to give me an error. It's going to tell me the lines must be in closed loop. The highlighted lines are open on one end. So basically, this needs to be a closed region or a closed loop. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to offset this. I'm going to offset it three, three inches. And I'm going to draw some end lines there to make sure that it's closed and I'm snapping okay click the green check mark and it makes my extrusion at one foot I could drag and make that a little bit taller so it's around four foot I can just type in four feet okay so I'm going to finish the model. So now we have one model, two model. Okay. So this is extrusion one. This is extrusion two. So if I want to subtract, if I want to go ahead and subtract from my spline shape, then I need to select that, go to edit in place, and then under create, I'm going to make uh, another extrusion. Okay, so what's my work plane going to be? I'm going to pick the front of this this object here, even though it's a different object. Let's see if it lets me first of all. If I go to pick a plane, yeah, it does. It does let me, which is pretty cool. All right, so now I'm just going to draw draw some lines here. Okay, so, and then I'm going to extrude this. I need to make sure that it goes through my object. Okay, I'm going to pick it up a little bit higher. All right, so that's going to go through my object. Okay, that other thing that this needs to be that's important is that needs to be a void. All right, so let me do my cut. So I'm picking that and that and that cut away. Let me undo that one more time. So for my cut, I'm picking my void and then my solid. 
All right, and then I'm going to click the green check mark. All right, so we have some objects, and what I would want you guys to do is is make a bunch of these objects, copy and array them, just like you did for your other um, assignments. So, um, and then these can be printed to a PDF. Now. Uh, let's let's experiment printing a little bit with this because you wouldn't make a four by ten sheet here. You would f make a minimum of in the assignment. It probably says make a minimum of fifty objects. Uh, you would go ahead and do that. I could select this. I could type in co, and I could copy this, and it's making copies. I can select this, type in co, and it's making some copies of it. Okay, so now if I was let me maximize this view close down this view alright so if I was to print this let's look at how we're gonna print this so we're gonna go to file and we're gonna go to print okay and if I go to properties I can change this to 4 by 10 Okay, I can get a preview of this. Now, for this, this is a little different than when we did the line drawings, because with the line drawings, we set up a window. So we used current window. Okay, that was the current crop window. Okay, and I'll, I'll look at both of these. This is visible portion of current window. So that's going to take the visible portion and fit it into the 4 by 10 format. Okay, that's pretty simple to just do it that way. Okay, the other way was based on my uh, my crop region. Okay, let's see if I can turn on the crop region. Show crop region. Yeah, that's based on this crop region. So if I was to bring this crop region in, I just don't know though what the proportions are for four by ten with this. But if I do the crop region, if I if I do it that way, then when I go to file print I want to choose current window okay so that's the difference between visible portion of current window and current window one uses the crop window so this is current window otherwise it's visible portion of current window alright I hope you found this video helpful if you did click on the thumbs up below leave me a comment of why you liked it my head's going to pop up in the upper left. Go ahead and click on my head if you haven't subscribed. And I'll put some links to some other videos in the upper right and in the lower right. I will see you on the next one.